Hello, Grant Wiley here from Worthington Publishing, here to bring you another game review in my uh, vlog, Grant's Game Room. Um, in this, I review games not only that we design, but also games that I currently own from other companies. Not only am I a designer publisher, I'm a gamer as well. Um, just for your information, when I review another company's game, I probably will tell you at the end whether to go buy or don't buy. Um, with our games, I'm not going to throw that out there. I'm going to leave that to you. I'm going to tell you what's inside the box, some of the design concepts we put in, what I really like, and uh, let you make your own decisions. So these videos on our games will probably be a little bit shorter than other people's games because um, I want you to make your decision on your own. Uh, if you would, please go below and uh, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate uh, definitely getting more viewers. Um, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you like this video or don't like it and tell us what you do or don't like and what you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll see some of the games I've had on my game shelf I've posted. I'm going to be doing reviews on those uh, current games as well as some old classics from the 70s and 60s, just giving, telling you why I've still got them on my game shelf. Um, also, be sure when you go below to subscribe to share. Uh, the link to this video with your friends if they're gamers you know you may not like this but maybe they will and you'll be sharing something they can sit down and enjoy so with that said let me get into our game that we're reviewing today it's hold the line the American Revolution uh, this is a I don't want to say it's the third edition but it's a remastered game we've done uh, one of our I think our second game we ever did as a company Worthington games back in 2004 2005 was Clash for a Continent. It used uh, thin wood chips with labels on them and you got uh, 12, 15 scenarios to refight. And then we turned around in 2007 and added different scenarios and called it Hold the Line. Did them with beautiful counters. Uh, artwork done by the artist Gary Zobley whose works are on display at the Alamo in Texas. Um, and then we partnered with PSC Games on this out of England to do plastics. So I'm going to pop the box. What you get here is a 11 half, 11 half box. It fits beautifully on your bookshelf. It's about two and a half, almost three inches wide. And that's because it's got a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in this box. Everything's hard mounted. The board, uh, the tiles. If you've ever played a Command and Colors or a Memoir 44, this is similar in style, but different. And I'll explain those differences as we go forward. Let's pop the box and see what you get. Well, right off the bat, dice. Always important, don't choke. Okay, you get plastics in red and blue for this one. Um, there is an expansion for this we did at the same time. You can get it on our website as well as this on our website and through various retailers. Um, that one is the French and Indian War expansion, but this one is pure American Revolution. You get a bag of red and a bag of blue. Uh, Americans, British. This is the American Revolution, so there's no big surprise there. And what kind of pieces do you get? Well, you get infantry. And if you go to our website or you go to boardgamegeek.com, uh, you'll see closer up details. I'm not going to rush to the camera with these. Uh, you get leaders, you get artillery, uh, you get militia, particularly with the Americans. You get the militiamen, you know, the backwoodsmen that fought, um, and you get dragoons, and of course I won't be able to find your, oh, there he is, dragoon, the man mounted on horseback. Um, awesome looking piece, he's got a nice sword held up there, ready to fight. Uh, with the British, you get different poses, um, similar figures. You, uh, both the American and British have flag bearers, and I'll explain this in a, in a minute. Uh, you get flag bearers, um, a different pose for the infantry, so you're not getting the same pose in different colors. Um, it, it's actually a marching British soldier. looks like he's marching up Bunker Hill, and the American's ready to stand firm at Guilford Courthouse. Um, these are really well designed. They're about... I think they're 22, 25 millimeter. They're sturdy bases. They're nice, big, square bases. These guys aren't your, your typical fall over. Now, he fell over because I gave him a good push. But as you can see, you know, they're not just tipping over. 
Um, the figures are good quality, soft plastic, semi-hard plastic. Um, we didn't want them too brittle to where they're snapping in your hand. Um, at the same time, like if you got a bent sword, a bent bayonet, if you hold it between your fingers for about five, 10 seconds, give it a little pull, it straightens right out. I mean, that's pretty good. I was very pleased when we got these in on our design proofs to look at, at how good they looked. Okay, going deeper. Um, much like Command and Colors, and if you're watching this, you've probably played Command and Colors or Memoir 44, uh, the World War II version, Richard Borg's classic titles. Um, you get a 9 by 13 hex grid. And this is a, oh, look out, don't lose an eye. Um, a 9 by 13 hard mounted board, lays good and flat on the table. Um, it's huge, as you can tell. A nice big board. And in the, you get two books with the game, a rule book and a scenario book. And in these, they tell you how to lay out your battles. You also get two player aid cards, full color, front and back, that give you terrain, um, weapons, a turn chart, um, how far each figure can fire. Uh, the rule book clocks in at 12 pages. You got another player aid chart on the back, can't have enough of those. Um, the rules are full color, beautiful. Lots of big graphics examples. There's a full page there. Um, and then you get into some optional rules and really a full page. So really you're probably looking at about nine, eight to nine pages, easy reading. It's not a lot of um, heavy reading, not a ton of exceptions, things like that. I don't like those. I know a lot of gamers don't like those. Don't give me a 40 page rule book with 12 pages of exceptions to your rules. Um, scenario book. You clock in at over 30 scenarios and I'm going to run real quick through some of these. You get Lexington and Concord, Bunker Hill, the Battle of Great Bridge out in Chesapeake near where our headquarters is. Quebec, Arnold at Quebec. Here you're trying to scale the walls at Quebec and break into the fortress around Quebec. Moores Creek, Long Island, Harlem Heights, White Plains from the New York campaign, Trenton, Princeton, Hubberton, Bennington, Brandywine, Birmingham, Hill, Freeman's Farm, Germantown. I wouldn't stop to breathe here. Bemis Heights, Monmouth, Monmouth Afternoon, Newport, Stony Point, Paulus Hook, Savannah, Camden, Morris Groves Mill, Kings Mountain, Calpin, Weitzel's Mill, Guilford Courthouse, Cobkirk Hill, Green Springs, Utah Springs, and yes, Yorktown. Uh, lots of play in there. Uh, you can play these battles in anywhere from uh, 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on your play speed. Um, with these, due to uh, with the different terrain types you get, you punch the hexes out, you lay them out on the board for the different battles. We tell you how to lay them out. Uh, you get rivers and swamps, uh, um, lots of rivers, lots of swamps, um, hills, towns, villages, uh, fences, breastworks. Let's see, more trees. We did a cool piece, it's a mega piece. It's one giant piece. You don't have to lay out eight hexes for this. This is one piece here that you just lay down on the board. It's representative of like the entrenchments at Yorktown when they took readouts nine and 10 there, uh, if you know anything about that battle. Uh, a row of entrenchments along, like along Bunker Hill, um, a wall, Quebec, and another entrenchment for, like I said, readout nine and 10 at um, Yorktown. You get a, a row of flags here to represent the different military units. Um, these, uh, you put one sticker bearer with like a regular, three regular infantrymen, and that's a unit of regular infantry. I'm gonna explain how the pieces work. I'll go into a little bit of game, game detail, and that'll be the end of today's video. Um, each unit type, and it's infantry, uh, elite infantry, dragoons, artillery, uh, militia, are all rated different. And we did that for a reason. Um, infantry are like three figures with a flag bearer, so you get four figures. Elite infantry are three figures with a flag bearer, but when they take their last hit, you got to roll a die to see if they're actually eliminated or not. They might stay. So elite are a little bit stronger. Militia infantry only take two hits. So we baked into the history. I told you last video, I like where history is baked in. 
we baked into the number of units on the piece into their morale and, and how they are affected. Militia aren't going to stay in a battle as long as regular infantry. Normally they're a shot or two and then they're skedaddling for home. So in this, uh, regular infantry would take four hits, militia would take two hits, and then they'd be gone. Dragoons take two hits. They're not going to stay in a battle long. Uh, one, one soldier said he never saw a, a dead cavalryman on a battlefield. I think that came from the American Civil War. Um, now, how are we different than like Command and Colors in Memoir 44 here? Command and Colors Memoir 44 breaks your battlefield up into three sections, left, right, center. And you get cards and some of your cards work on different flanks and different positions or all of the positions. I like Memoir 44, I like Command and Colors. Um, so don't take this as a criticism. We did this with action points. And what we did is we rated generals based on their command and how well they handled troops on a battlefield. I never liked the fact that uh, I'm out of left flank cards, so nobody on the left flank can move until I draw a left flank card. Um, and I get the logic in that is that sometimes things happen out of your control and you, you know, as a leader, your men on the left aren't moving. But in ours, each leader in each battle is assigned a set number of action points. Uh, Washington at, at the Battle of Monmouth afternoon might have four action points. That means he can activate four of his units for, and when I say a unit, I mean like three infantry and a flag and one hex, uh, units and one hex. Um, he can activate those units, four of them, for fighting, close combat. Close combat costs two action points, I believe. Um, to fire cost one, range fire, artillery can fire like three hexes, infantry two, uh, different things like that. We also add a random number of action points. Each turn you roll a die and you get from one, sometimes zero to four, just depending on the battle, action points to add to your base action points. So say I rolled a one with Washington at Monmouth. He would add one action point to the four he's got, so now he can move five. So you might have this grand plan that, oh, this turn I'm going to advance my whole arm and, and, you know, just overwhelm the enemy. Bad luck, you only get one action point. You can move four or five, but you're not going to be able to move eight or nine. So it reflects randomness in war. It makes it really good if you're a solo gamer. Uh, I play a lot of my games solitaire when we're not play testing. So that's a cool feature because of the randomness you never know how many action points you're going to get things like that and it makes every game very different um, and every turn very different you, you can plan but you can't plan but so much um, i really like that feature again it's another baked into history feature that i don't need special rules or exceptions i get my commander's base ap it's the same rule throughout all the scenarios and then you add the random baked in history like it, don't give me exceptions, give me the rules, make them simple, make them understandable and enjoyable. Um, guys, that's pretty much it for this one. I appreciate you watching. Again, if you'll go below and subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like this one. Uh, I've added a cool new feature here. I got a lapel mic, so hopefully you understand me. It doesn't sound like I'm talking out of a box like in my previous videos. Uh, hopefully Wednesday I'll be posting a Grant's Designer vlog number four out on the website as I keep working through our cowboy uh, game as we design that. And I'm also going to be on Grant's Design Vlog talking about upcoming games with Worthington Publishing. So, um, you know, give you a preview of some of what we're working on that may be a little bit down the road or it could slide in front. If we find we get a breakthrough with a game, sometimes we'll swing around production schedule and run something to the front versus waiting to produce it. I appreciate you watching. Thanks. And be sure to check back in uh, Wednesday, like I said, for the designer vlog and some more game reviews. Hopefully on Thursday or Friday, I'll be reviewing the 1975 game Skirmish. Uh, I believe that was Milton Bradley. Um, and there's a reason I'm going to be uh, reviewing that one, and I'll tell you why then. Thanks. Have a great day. And as always, happy gaming.